I'm Grace Farrell and you're watching the 86th floor. Now we're in full humans mode here, the new Channel 4 and AMC miniseries about robots taking over the world. We're hoping to create a fan panel from episode 5 onwards like we did for Outlander. So if this is something you might be interested in participating with, please drop us a line at the email address below. So this episode, episode 2, began with Laura lying in bed with her eyes closed and then suddenly opening them. Now this is a massive synthism if ever I saw one, so it seems to be drawing parallels between humanoids and the real humans. Real humans of course being the title of the original Swedish series that Humans is based on. By the way, what the hell was all that about when Max hooked up Leo to an electric circuit in that toilet? I can't work out whether he was bringing Leo back to life or just giving him a little electrical boost. I don't know whether that was supposed to be like a pacemaker or a defibrillator or whether we're supposed to conclude that Leo is not a normal human. Theories are welcome guys because I haven't got a clue. So let's talk about Anita. We've come to know Anita the best of all the simps over the first two episodes but the question is, is she good or evil? Because there's definitely something creepy about her relationship with Laura and the family but at the same time she seems to be really loving and protective over the children and she keeps remembering happy times swimming in that lake which really doesn't look like a particularly evil memory to have. Also, Gemma Chan has got that sim-like movement down to a T. Also, why won't she share her data with other sims? I mean, what kind of data is she harvesting that she doesn't want to pass on? We see at the end that Laura is taking Anita back to the shop for a refund, at which point Anita smiles, but I kind of wanted to see how it played out with her in the house. Hopefully, Laura trying to return Anita will take the storyline in an exciting direction. Another thing to mention is this father figure, the creator that binds Max, Leo, Niska and possibly Anita and Fred together. It must be the David Elster character mentioned by Hob in episode 1. But what's the motive behind creating conscious and potentially lethal synths? Again, this feels very Utopia-esque. By the way, I loved it when the Synthetic Registration Act was mentioned. Again, it familiarises the concept of synths being part of modern life, as did the instruction manual that Laura consulted when Anita was acting suspiciously, which looked like it could have totally been like an iPad box or something. Now, I've seen a few articles suggesting that Vera, the controlling nurse synth who's been forced on George, is somehow supposed to be a metaphor for our current care system. Now, personally, I don't think that's so, unless it's a metaphor for how we might begin to deal with pressures on the NHS in the future. I think most would agree the fact that there seems to be an ever-available GP for Vera to report to definitely can't be likened to our current care system. A bit of a sticking point for me is the synth brothel. How do we feel about this? Is it immoral to have sex with a robot who looks and acts like a human? Or is it a logical progression from real life prostitution where arguably no one gets hurt? And is the fact that people, e.g. the paedophile we saw in this episode, can make these synths fulfil their sick fantasies a bad idea? Or will it help alleviate real life paedophilia and such like? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So lastly, I think a really touching discovery that we made in episode two was the fact that Odie has been taught how to remember things by George, despite George having his own memory loss with his Alzheimer's. So the need for Odie and George to stay together becomes even greater now that we realise Odie is remembering for George. That's it from me for now, but what did you think of episode two? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe for more videos like this. See you next time. Thank you.